building. Yeah, players played well. Um, closer than, than expected, but yet at the end, you know, we had a six run win over them. Uh, you know, our, our fourth conference win. So, uh, I think it's doing really well this year. So, it's great to see. Fourth conference win. Yep. That's outstanding, yep. isn't it? It is this year, yeah. You got to be very proud, and I'm sure the girls are very proud of, uh, yep. of their, uh, their team and their efforts also. So, why don't we go around here? You can introduce yourself, tell us what you play, and uh, maybe what uh, level you are in school. My name is Stacey. Okay. Okay. Um, my name is Taylor Abrams. I play one doubles, and I'm. My name is Andy Ramirez. I play two singles, and I'm a senior. My name is Chris Brazil, and I play one doubles, and I'm a junior. All right, and for those of you that aren't necessarily tennis fans, when they say they're playing one or two, that's the position. They play four singles and three doubles. Is that correct, folks? Correct. Yeah, so they'll have a number one singles, a number two singles, a number three singles, a number four singles, and then the same thing for one, two, three, and doubles. So that's what they mean when they say, I play number one singles. That means that she is playing the top-level singles on the team. So. Let's start out with the number one thing. Tell us about your match uh, this week. Um, this match, I think, played really well. Uh, and I just said, uh, the ball, but I kind of like lost it. And um, I kind of just like lost it. I was down there. I think I played really well. Better than I did. A little bit of a mental letdown? Is that what you're implying there? Okay, okay. All right, before we go any farther... Who won the United States Open for the women? Coco Golf. Yes, Coco Golf. Very proud of you for knowing that. Yeah, Coco Golf, 19 year old, won the U.S. Open women's title last uh, Saturday. First woman, first teenager since uh, Serena Williams won in 1999. But I digress. We'll go on. I think you said you played the number one double. Is that correct? You played Grace. All right. So let's get you and Grace in here. How did your matches go this week? <laughs> wow. Um, we did really well with like our placement too, so that helps us like to play, you know, super well and play well for the team. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
cat-like reflexes up oh, there God. at the NASA. Like the craziest, like, backhand, five arms, and everything. All right. What's your strength? What strength do you bring to the team now? Serve. I, yeah, I think I, I can serve pretty well, so that makes me excited all the time. So. Good deal. Good deal. All right. And how about you? What did you think of the match this week? Um, I think I match. He played uh, tennis in college. And we were at one of his college matches down in Nebraska one time. And, and there was another adult, I assume maybe a parent, watching. But they must not have really known anything about tennis. <laughs> because whether your opponent hits the ball into the net or out, what do you do? You cheer, right? Yeah. You're happy. You say, yes, okay. Unfirst error for those of you that uh, aren't in the tennis world. But. This one adult, I assume to be a parent, started complaining because he thought it was poor sportsmanship when the player was cheering because the other player hit it out, hit it into the net or something. I had to kind of take him aside and explain to him, look, <laughs> the opponent isn't cheering because the other person missed the shot. They're cheering their own efforts, they're applauding their own efforts, and and you got to remember that the opponent hit it out because the first player hit such a great shot that he just couldn't return it. You know, is that is that kind of the mentality now when you said you got down on yourself because of a bad shot? Yeah. But at the same time, you hit some good shots, and you're like, yes. Yeah, sometimes, you know, I will give myself a little break, so and I do get a bit, uh, like, you know, <laughs> Does anybody have a go-to chair? Like, there's, I've, I've seen some players, every time they win a point, come on. <laughs> Lindsay for sure. Where did that ever start in tennis? When they get a good point, have a good shot, come on. Yeah, I have no idea. Is it just easier to say than way to go or yes or take that? <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, we've got some seniors on the team. You're a very experienced team. Let's go around. Uh, what are your future plans? <laughs> kind of a techie girl, huh? Yeah. Good, good. And you don't know where you'd go, but, but you like the computer uh, computer science aspect of it. Yeah. Yep, yep. How about you? Uh, okay. Go Mavericks. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, they tend. Did you want to play sports in, in college, you think? Or, or maybe just intermurally? Definitely like music for fun, but I'm not one of the Okay. Good deal. All right. How about you two over here? What are you What are you two thinking? Um, I'm not quite sure when I want to come here, but I know I want to make public. Okay. And I'll probably find All right. Even though I do have another year, luckily, um, I would love to maybe be a physical therapist or an athletic trainer. Okay. And Something in the in the health field. I would also like to play. Like, Awesome, awesome. Well, I encourage you all to at least play intramural and club sports. Um, but if you can, get get into the uh, whatever it is, the tennis program at the, at the school of your choice. Great experiences. Um, you meet some wonderful friends. You get to travel. Uh, so it's not only the friends on your team that you really bond with, but you you meet your competitive, your competing teams, and uh, you're going to get lifelong friends out of that, too. 
definitely, if you don't want to go that route, go with the intramural uh, sport. So today you've got a match. Noon, so Coach, tell us about the upcoming match. Um, the UNC, you know, Coach Benson and Wells, they're coming over. First time we've ever seen them. Um, it should be a very competitive match. We're, we're probably going to be looking at ourselves in the mirror. Um, on paper, we're pretty equally matched across the board, so it should be could be fun. Um, we'll be interested to see. They've seen Albert Lee Austin and TCU, so have a pretty good look on paper for them. But more importantly, I look at this match as a good setup for us for Tuesday to play with. Okay. okay. So the match today, you have some uh, common common yep, opponents, yep, 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 yep. and how have we done versus the common opponents versus how they've done? Um, they've won and we've won. So okay. It's, it's so, pretty equally matched. So same kind of type of win. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a nice battle today. And the matches are at noon today right here in Faribault. It's Faribault High School. Correct. Courts, yep. So if you're not doing anything today, folks, stop down 12 o'clock noon at the Faribault Senior High Tennis Courts. Watch the uh, Falcon Ladies in action. It should be a good match. And then you set up coming on Tuesday. You've got Red Wing. Red Wing's coming over. Okay. Tuesday. Oh, you got another home match then too. What Red time? Four forty-five on Tuesday. Four forty-five on Tuesday. Another home match with Red Wing. So, how do you think Red Wing's going to be? Um, they're going to be strong, but I think we should be able to hold their position and kind of figure out what to do. All right. Now, most important, do you have any matches next Saturday? And if they, if you do, is it in town so you can at least come back and visit and? Give us the recap of these two matches. We do. We have a tie with New Craig and Farmington. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we started kind of in the Yeah, so yeah, we'll yeah. Start. Yeah, if you have a triangular, that means you've got three teams there, and it's kind of a round-robin type Correct. type thing where uh, you play, you each play the other two opposing teams. So right. that's what a triangular is. And that starts at 10 a.m. next Saturday. Correct. And is it home or? It is home. What? How did we get so many home matches today? Uh, this year we're home heavy, so they must have known we actually got a hold of tennis balls this year. So I, think it's a, I think it's a reflection of the coach. Okay. <laughs> yeah. got the pull. Yeah. 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 I don't know. And then the following week we got big nine. So okay. Season's coming, coming up pretty quick here. Good deal. Good deal. But you've had a great season so far. Uh, I hope that you can continue it this week and get the, get a couple of W's from uh, UCF. USC, USC and Red Wing, United South Central. Yep. Yeah, I got to get those uh, initials right. But uh, good luck, ladies. I hope you do well today. Please come back. Uh, doesn't sound like you come back next Saturday, but hopefully, uh, you know, you'll come back and give us uh, a recap of the latest matches. Anything you would like to close with going into your match with USC? Silence stepped in. We are live, folks, by the way, on the radio. Work so. <laughs> hard and, you know, do our best. Has what's going on mentally? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it'll be good enough, won't it? Yep. All right. Well, ladies, good luck today. Get the W. And uh, I look forward to you coming back and giving us a recap. And please take some of these delicious treats. I got you. We, uh, we'll even get you some boxes if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies. Now we're going to bring in the BA head football coach. He's kind of a regular on the show, and, and thank God he is because he brings great insight and uh, uh, some good knowledge about the, uh, about the game. So, Coach... Let's introduce yourself, and uh, we can talk a little bit about your, your game last night and overall how the season is going. Well, uh, you know, so far we're, we're 2-1-1. Uh, started off with a couple of uh, couple of wins. Um, last night was uh, pretty disappointing uh, from the outcome perspective, but uh, not disappointing from the level of effort that the, uh, the boys play with. Uh, they came out uh, full of fire. Uh, we played... Uh, Fillmore Central, who I believe, is uh, latest poll was ranked fourth in the state. Uh, I think we were like 15th or 16th. Um, they uh, they uh, beat us last year in the section championship game. Uh, they went on to the second round of state. Uh, top quality team. They got a bunch of seniors back. I knew we'd have to play our, our very best game if we wanted to hang with them, and, and the boys did. They came out with uh, lots of fire. It was a very physical game. Uh, back and forth. Uh, I believe they scored first. We came back, scored 
uh, went up by a point because we got the two-point conversion. Uh, we were tied up going into halftime. Uh, came back out, played really well in the uh, third quarter. Uh, we actually uh, scored, went up 20-14, to 14, and then uh, close to the end of the game, I believe they scored. Uh, personally, we blocked the uh, extra point. Uh, so we went with a 20-20 tie. Uh, and in the uh, overtime period, uh, they stopped us, and uh, we weren't able to stop them. They went in and uh, scored a touchdown on their like, fourth down, and they were, of course, there at about the one-yard line. Uh, our defense played really well last night. I think we had three goal line stands where they were literally on our one-yard line or less, and we stopped them, and then we were able to move the ball out of the end zone. So uh, from an effort standpoint, I mean, I couldn't ask for any more as a coach. Uh, if we play with that intensity the rest of the year, I think we'll be just fine. And as I uh, talked to the coach last night, I said, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys again in the section, section championship game is where I'm assuming we'll probably see them again. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, yeah. It, should be, it should be a good rematch somewhere in there. Of course, we've got a, you know, a couple of tough games that we have to uh, win to, to you know, get to that point. But uh, I think if we keep playing well, we'll be in good shape. Yeah, you've got a very strong team this year, uh, a lot of maturity on the team this year. So they're playing great. Like you said, you started out with uh, two great wins, and then uh, what a tough loss, though. But quality opponent. So. You know, you can't hang your head too much, but uh, it sure would have been nice to be 3-0. and But 2-1 and isn't bad. Yeah, it would have, would have been nice to get that win, especially as hard as the guys played in the fact that, I mean, we had a couple of opportunities, uh, you know, where we you know, could have put it away. I mean, we scored, uh, you know, three times, and we missed, uh, you know, the extra point on two of those. Uh, so if we converted, you know, we went for two on both of them. If we converted either one of those, and would have ended in regulation with a, yeah. with a win. But, yeah. You know that's uh, that's the way it goes. Sometimes it's a it's a tough tough game, and it's a uh, you know the old cliche. It's a game of inches and uh, and turnovers and errors, and and uh, you know they made some errors, we made some errors, and uh, they made the big play when they needed to make the big play. Yeah. Now um, after touchdown, are are you kicking extra points? Or are you going for two? Or we're, we're going for two. Okay. Uh, we've we've okay. done that consistently. Um, not totally confident in our kicking for one, and maybe I should have just gone for one because, I mean, they, they got a pretty stout defense as well, and, and they kind of figured out what we do on our uh, two-point conversions. So, you know, maybe, you know, thinking back now, I'm kind of kicking myself. If I just kicked one of those extra points, it, you know, would have turned out different. Maybe we would have gotten one of those. Maybe we wouldn't. But, you know, the zips and butts were candy, and that's what a Merry Christmas it would be. <laughs> that is true. That is true. And maybe, you know, a little extra uh, kicking practice this week, you know, and you might just uh... – might, might just throw a guy out there some night and give him a chance to be the hero. I mean, think how, think how exciting that would be for the kid. Yeah. Well, you know, Derek Sando, our running back, he does our you know kickoff duties, and and he's actually a very good kicker. Uh, but you know, there's a lot more than just you know the kick, the, yep. the snap, yep. it's the hold, and just trying to get all that timing and the blocking. And, and usually, we're very successful on our two point conversion. So. Uh, you know, generally we, strength. Yeah, yeah, generally we get more points if, when we go for two, even if we miss one or two of them. And you know, last night we just we didn't. So yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. Overall, it's uh, you know, it's a uh, six and one half a dozen of another. Like you said, you you score on fifty percent of your point conversions, it'd be the equivalent of one hundred percent of the, the extra points made. Uh, so you kind of got to go with the strength, but. Uh, what do you have coming up this week? So uh, this week we got a Thursday night game, so we got a very short week to prepare. So uh, we have Lewis and Altura, and I know absolutely nothing about these guys. They were a two A team uh, the last two seasons. Uh, they're actually they're still a two A team, but they got when the high school league reshuffled the districts, they moved into our district. Uh, so I, I haven't even seen any tape yet on them. I just got a, the email message that they just got loaded in the huddle, so when I get out of here, I guess I'll go home and start breaking down tape and see what they do. I don't know what they run for an offense. I don't know what they run for a defense. Uh, I know they used to be a pretty pretty solid uh, ball club in years past. I think they're uh, down a little bit the last couple of years, but, again, we can't overlook anybody at this point with, uh, you know, one loss now. We've got to run the table. Yeah. And we want to get that, uh, hopefully, the number two seed in our section and, and make a run back, uh, you know, trying to get to the state. Where is the game on Thursday? Uh, we have to travel to Lewis and Altura, which... Where is that even? It's, <laughs> it's some, some, 
somewhere down in southeast Minnesota. Like, okay. uh, I think good. it's, uh, I saw the sign for Lewiston when we went down to Rushford Peterson a couple weeks ago. Wow. So it's uh, it's somewhere down there. I'm guessing it's probably an hour and 35 hour it's a hike. bus ride. So, yeah, it's yeah. A hike. <clears throat> so uh, you know, once again, but uh, I think that's our last long travel one. The week after that, we got Goodhue, which is, you know, 45 minute drive. And then uh, we got Blooming at home to end the season. Oh, we have to go to Hayfield as well, but that's a little short drive. So. Yeah, yeah. And Taking Water Mango has to come visit us this year. So uh, so we got a few more drives, but this is the last really, you know, big one. Long so, drive, yeah. yeah. So okay. looking forward to, you know, playing somebody new and uh, kind of, you know, stretching our, stretching our legs a little bit, I guess, because, you know, you know we, these other teams, we kind of know each other pretty well. We've played each other multiple times. You kind of know what to expect, but... Uh, now uh, this one will uh, stretch myself and the rest of the coaching staff this week to kind of figure out well what are these guys doing how do we how do we stop them yeah exactly and they're going to be saying the same thing about you right you know uh, they might even be a little I'm mean, going to use the term fearful not probably the proper term to use but you know they're going to be saying hey you know we got to play the BA and uh, they're a darn good team so they haven't seen a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, video on you and. And they have not much to prepare on either. So yeah, I think probably both coaching staffs are you know you're a little apprehensive when you don't really know what a team does. I mean, fortunately with Huddle, we'll get you know multiple tapes and kind of see what they're doing. But it's kind of like last year in the playoffs, we played Kingsland, who uh, they played a nine man regular season, but they had to play eleven man. So you know, well, how do you prepare for that? Because <laughs> none of their tape shows you how they're going to play. You know, an eleven man you know, playoff game. So, yeah. so those are always kind of the hard ones as a coach is figuring out, you know, what are these guys, you know, kind of game plan and figured out what's got to do. But, you know, we'll just we'll rely on our basics. Uh, you know, we got a good, super good passing game this year with great receivers. We got a solid running game. Uh, we had a, in fact, yesterday we stopped them on the one-yard line. I think it was the second play from scrimmage. Derek Sando uh, broke out to the right side and went, I don't even, I haven't seen the, that sheet yet, but it was probably a 96, 97 yard touchdown run that you know put us ahead. Uh, nice. So nice. Uh, that was kind of fun to see. Uh, you know, he's got great speed. He was on the Faribault uh, High School co-op uh, track team this, and left the state with a four by four by 100 relay or okay. four by two. I can't remember which one, but he's super fast. And uh, so uh, we'll just have to kind of figure out what's going on with these these guys coming up. And then, uh, you know, the following week, we got Goodhue, which we played in the past. They were 2A the last couple of years. They dropped back down to single A again. So uh, we'll shake off. I'm, you know, sure a lot of these coaches are like me. We don't really change too much from year to year. Uh, so we'll have to shake off the cobwebs on that tape and see what uh, they're going to look like. But, uh, number one thing is just getting through Lewis and Alterna this week on, on, and on a short week, so not much prep time. And, and how did we end up with a, a Thursday game at this point in the season? I mean, we, we usually have an early week game during MEA, but that's still a ways away. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm guessing this is another one driven by the shortage of officials in the state. Okay. So I, I didn't get the official word, but my guess is that uh, we had to move it to Saturday or move it to a Thursday. And, yeah. Personally, I'm okay with the Thursday. We'll probably take uh, well, we will we'll take Friday off this week. Give the kids a nice long weekend to kind of rest and recover. It will be halfway through the season, and uh, you know it gets to be kind of a grind at, uh, at this point. So it's kind of nice that you know have that Thursday game. We'll take Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and come back. We can take one Monday and that's prepared. How is uh, how is the health on your team right now? I've got a couple boys that are uh, that are out, unfortunately. Uh, two of my starting uh, linebackers, uh, Lucas uh, Heron broke his collarbone in uh, week one, unfortunately, and uh, he was doing a great job for us. And then last week we lost uh, Tommy Kunze, a linebacker, so we had to you know adjust our uh, our defense a little bit to make up for that. Uh, but uh, it seemed to work pretty well last night. Pretty solid against uh, you know a team that's been putting up forty some points against everybody else that they played. So. Uh, you know, just got to make those adjustments. Hopefully, Tommy will be back in a few weeks. Lucas, uh, last I heard, was like eight to ten weeks. But, uh, you know, he's young and healthy, and maybe that uh, collarbone will heal, heal up a little bit quicker. We can get him back, uh, you know, maybe for the playoffs, which would be you know, great for the team and, and great for him. Yeah, collarbone in football isn't something you can just put a Band-Aid on and say, ah, get back out there, son. <laughs> no, you know, he was in quite a bit of pain, you know, the night he got hurt. And, uh, but I think he's, he's moving around pretty well now, and, uh, you know, he's got a great attitude. And uh, So we're just excited. To, and fortunately for him, 
you know, he's a sophomore, so he's got a lot of a lot of playing time ahead of him. But you know, you hate to have a guy that's got a bright future miss out on you know getting a whole lot of experience this year. But uh, you know, when he gets back, he'll be uh, he'll be awesome for us. Now, now we're going to use him as an example, um, not a specific example, but just in general. Now, you've got a sophomore, key player on your team, gets hurt. Is this a good opportunity for you to say, okay, now pay attention? You know, watch what's going on from the sidelines or, you know, and make sure that you stay in the game, even though you can't really be in the game. Yeah, in fact, both of these guys, uh, they're still coming to practice every day. They're out there watching what's going on. Uh, they're engaged. Uh, they're involved. Because that's just kind of, you know, young guys that uh, I've got on my team, all these guys. You know, they want to be there. They want to play. Uh, I know it kills them to, to be on the sideline on, on Friday nights and, and not be out there. It kills them not to practice, I think. Uh, you just, you know, they're out hanging with their friends and their buddies, and, and that's really what's you know most important is you know these guys are you know, teammates and they're friends and they spend time together uh, you know all the time. In fact, I'm, I'd be shocked if the guys well I don't know if they're listening they're probably still in bed but they get together every Saturday as a as a team and they watch film long before you know they get together with the coaches on Monday and uh, and get critiqued. They've already critiqued themselves pretty hard, so. Uh, now, yeah, is that the captains group. that bring the that bring them together for film and, and stuff? Yeah, I, I would imagine the captains are driving that. Uh, I got a great set of uh, captains this year. Uh, actually, actually, I, I couldn't narrow it down. I just have so many great leaders that are seniors this year. I actually have six captains. Uh, normally, we'd have four, but uh, yeah, you had to order extra seniors for the jerseys. Yeah, you? yeah, we if we did that, we we need a, need a few extras. But uh, they're really a, a a great group of well, every one of my ball players. I think. Just you know, very nice young men. They do the right stuff. Uh, back to speaking of doing the right stuff, this week we had tackle cancer activities. We teamed up with the volleyball uh, team, and they did a uh, big cancer night on Thursday night. I think they raised over $1,000, and we're going to combine their funds and everything we raised last night to tackle cancer to go to the Randy Shaver uh, Cancer Research and Community Fund, which keeps all the money right here in the state of Minnesota. It all goes to... Uh, you know, University of Minnesota Cancer Research, families that are undergoing cancer treatment here. I don't know what our final total was, but uh, in three years of doing it, uh, we've raised over $10,000, so we've done a little over $3,500 a year. I'm guessing we've raised somewhere north of $4,000 this year, which considering, you know, Bethlehem Academy is not exactly a, a big school, I, I mean, we beat some of the 6A schools on what we bring in for our tackle cancer. So, uh, you know, they're very involved in that. Tonight is, uh, or this afternoon, is Spirit Fest out of Divine Mercy Catholic Church, and uh, I asked if I could get 12 volunteers to help do the teardown. I got 16. Well, I was going to say, I bet you got 14. You you know, got 14 I, got, I actually got 16. Last year I had yeah. 14. This year I got 16 boys yeah. that are going to come yeah. out, and, you know, it's, moving tables and chairs and a, and a lot of work, but uh, they're willing to, to help the community and, and give back. As you, as you had on the shirt, if you could find it, you know, the AEG, the team model, yeah, attitude, yeah, effort yeah. and gratitude. Uh, these guys do a great job. On I, uh, I, I tried so hard to find my AEG shirt that you, uh, you gave me last year or the year before, and I couldn't find it, so I'm going to have to buy another one for, from you. But um, I'll just brag a little bit, not only about your team, but all of the athletes and all of the uh, extracurricular uh, participants that we talk to, Gordy and I talk to, they are all great young men, great women, um, and that is a reflection on the coaches, on the leaders of each individual program, whether it's DECA or band or whatever. We've got some quality people leading quality students. So, folks, I uh, appreciate you listening to the Parable Coaches Show today. We're going to have to uh, sign off here in mere seconds, but I wish... Uh, Bethlehem Academy, good luck this Thursday. I look forward to uh, hearing the results. Uh, it'll be the